Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is a video about fitting the new Lulzbot Flexi Dually version 2 dual extruder to a Lulzbot TAS 5. I do quite a lot of printing in my channel, including quite a lot of printing in NinjaFlex flexible filaments. You may remember from my alien xenomorph suit that I built, I did hybrid prints with a dual extruder, printing in both rigid and flexible materials to make hybrid prints for some of those parts. Some of those parts were just rigid and some were also NinjaFlex printed with the same extruder. There's now a new version of that extrude route which I've got just here. So we're going to fit that onto a Lulzbot TAS 5 and give it a quick go. So let's see what's in the box. Alright here it is, so let's open it up and see what we've got. Right on the top is a piece of paper stating congratulations and it gives you a link here for ohai.lulzbot.com slash accessories which we'll look at in a minute. That is the open hardware assembly instructions. All of Lulzbot's products are totally open source hardware and software and there are full guides for assembling all of them should you wish to recreate them yourself. So anyway let's see what's in here. We've got a lot of packaging. This is the main tool head which we'll open in a second. I've also got a bag with some bits and pieces on including another spool arm because it's a dual extruder so we need two spools of filament. A cable which plugs into the control box and the tool head. Some various filaments in both flexible and rigid filament to try out and this is Lulzbot NinjaFlex Green which is colour matched, you'll notice. It's everything Lulzbot. Another filament guide tube and also a glue stick. Right, so let's see what we've got here. So this is the new tool head, which looks pretty good. Um, there's some notable changes, including the new hot ends and various fans. But let's compare that with the previous version. So on the left here, I have the um, previous Flexi Dually version one, which you can see is very well used. And this is the one I'm unboxing now. So uh, notable differences, of course, as I say, are the new hexagon hot end, which is an all metal hot end and goes up to 300 degrees for exotic materials. The previous Buddish nozzle only did 230 degrees, uh, which is all right for ABS, but you couldn't print much else like nylon and so on with it. Uh, this one you'll notice has got um, some fans as well. It's got a fan mounted either side and two fan vents on each side. So it blows air from each side of the nozzle, which is quite good. Uh, this one had no fans at all and the all metal hot end, a single extruder has um, one fan or at least it did in the version that I've got. Uh, this one's also got what appears to be a CNC uh, plate here, which I suspect is aluminium that mounts the whole thing because it's quite wide. This one was 3D printed and there were some issues with that flexing which um, affected alignment of the nozzles. And this one's also got a metal adjusting pin here to adjust the height so you can vary the height of the two and again this one is plastic. Apart from that the top half's pretty similar. It is a flexi um, extruder version 2 which has minor changes to the 3D print. Um, this one has a grub screw in the side whereas this one does not. It's just uh, come with the right tension on it um, but apart from that it's a standard extruder at the back which you'll find on most Lulzbot printers and as I say these are open source so if you want to build your own you can go and download all the STLs and print the parts so there we go that could be a good upgrade if you've got a spare hot end lying around this is the open hardware assembly instructions at ohai.lulzbot.com and you can find assembly instructions for everything here including the whole printer. If you wanted to build one from parts it tells you how to put every piece of it together um, down to you know the x-axis end idlers, um, absolutely everything. Um, today we need to look at the accessories and upgrades which is the, on the top left here which tells you about all of the extruders, um, putting a graphical LCD on if you bought the kit tans which didn't have one and so on and so on. So uh, today we need to look at the Flexi Dually version 2 on a TAS 5. So um, I'm going to go through this guide. I'm probably not going to show all of it on the screen, but we'll quickly have a look through it. Um, obviously this is what we've unboxed. You've got um, quite a lot of steps here to tell you how to do absolutely everything all the way through. Um, fitting, levelling, calibrating, how to use Cura to change over the tool head, flash the firmware, um, and so on and so on and so on, all the way through doing a test print, a calibration print, um, and finally having it operational. But let's go back and have a look at the printer and get that tool head on. 
I've positioned the printer so that the hot end is right in the middle and the guide recommends 200mm height so you've got space to work on the hot end. But the first thing we need to do is replace this screw. It's this one here and I'm assuming that's because the new hot end will hit it because it sticks out quite a bit. So a replacement is supplied in the kit which has a smaller head on it. Um, so we need to undo that. I'm using my Lulzbot supplied uh, hex driver. They now come with a set of Allen keys, but there we go. And um, this screw is screwed into a what's called a T-nut, which is inside this rail. And if I just unscrew this, it will fall down. So they've also supplied this handy piece of 3D printed plastic, which clips in just underneath. And that stops the T-nut falling down. So there we go. So if I undo this now. That should be it, so if I slide this down you'll see the T-nut slides down as well, which I have to keep in there. Hopefully you can just see that. So let's take that washer off and put the new screw in. That seems to be it. The next thing we have to do is remove these chunky corner clamps on the bed and replace them with a low profile metal version which is supplied. Alright, I've done all four of them. The printer has one fold out arm here to hold the filament spool on and also one guide tube which goes all the way to the extruder. As I said there is another one supplied which we need to fit so we can hold two spools. I'm going to move the existing one down and we can just undo the screw there and move that down a bit and then we need to fit the next one just above it here so we can squeeze two spools in. So this has come ready supplied with its T-nut there which we need to take off there, put in that channel and screw the arm to it. So if I'm lucky I should be able to push that in. There we go. And then I can screw the second arm in. There we go, and I can position those as I need to to make sure I can get the two spools in. We've also got another filament guide tube which just snaps onto that existing peg so that we can run two filament guides in. Here is the uh, control box for the Taz 4 stroke 5 and uh, you'll notice this is where the existing hot end is, this is the LCD and there's a connector here helpfully supplied to plug in another hot end so if we undo this we've got a big connector in here with lots of pins in on the TAS 3 you had to run the wires inside the control box but on the 4 and 5 they put the connectors here and the cable is supplied here which just plugs in now if you're upgrading a Lulzbot TAS 4 you'll find here there's only one pin that's not populated but on a TAS 4 you'll find there's two which aren't populated and those are one of the extra fans you get on the hot, the all metal hot end supplied with the TAS 5 so you will need to get this additional cable or that will be supplied if you buy the TAS 4 upgrade kit to populate those pins and that just plugs on inside and again the uh, documentation for this is on ohai.lolzbot.com exactly where to fit this cable and where to plug it in but for now I just have to plug this in and screw it down there are keys in here which have to go in the right place, so I believe it goes that way, and then this will turn. It's quite tight, but it's a good fit. There we go, and we need to route this cable around. Zip ties are supplied, so we just need to zip tie that on in the same place, uh, making sure we don't obstruct any of the axis, so that should be a pretty quick job. It's time to finally actually swap the tool head. So all we need to do is undo the connectors here. So you may find you've got multiple connectors if you've got a TAS4 style, or you might find you've got one connector. But I'm gonna remove all four of these, and then the extruder itself is held in just with one screw. So if I undo that, and just support it and make sure it doesn't fall down, keeping the screw safe, we should find this just hooks out of here. And every tool head for these printers has a, a kind of tongue and groove. So it's really easy to fit the new one in, it just slots right in. And then we can stick that screw back in. 
Before doing that though, it's really important to make a note of these numbers written on the back, which are the E steps, which is basically the calibration for each extruder. So I've got 887 and 938, but it will vary, and these are calibrated in the factory before they left, or at least tested, to find out how many steps of the stepper motor will extrude one millimetre of filament. So those values are quite important, and we need to put those into the software in a moment. I can now plug in my new tool head and that goes into the cable on the new cable and the existing cable. So the new TAS5 style is this single multi-pin connector and that will plug uh, just right into the uh, new extruder on the front. Uh, the other one of course I've got these old style TAS4 connectors so Lulzbot have supplied an adapter which I can connect to those cables and that allows me to connect it to the new extruder so I'll get that all connected up. I've mounted the adapter on this side and that's plugged into all of those four connectors. This one will plug straight in and it needs to go through here, which is its strain relief and zip tied on. So we have to be very careful to get this the right way round. Refer to the guide if you are in any doubt, it should only fit one way. There we go. And we need to leave a bit of slack and just push that in there. Make sure we've got enough slack for those um, cables to move and not too much tension on that side. I'll just check that. That can move up and down freely, which it can, so that's all right. Now I just need to put a cable tie in here. Now we can power the printer on and connect it with a USB cable to a computer running Cura. The Lulzbot edition of Cura is available from lulzbot.com slash Cura and there are versions here for uh, Linux, Windows and Mac OS X. So I've already got the Windows version installed here. So what we need to do now is go to the machine. I've already got the TAS5 selected here with the half mil nozzle. We need to go to machine settings and we need to click on change tool head. So uh, first of all it is a hexagon hot end. It is also a Flexi Dually version 2, which is that one. And then it says we need to flash the firmware, so we better click on that. Before flashing the firmware you'll notice that the display is displaying the actual temperature for extruder 1 and the bed there and both the targets are currently set to zero because I haven't heated it up. So let's click on that flash firmware button. and that should start to update. When it's done the printer should reboot and now you'll see we actually have the other temperature for the second hot end displayed on here. Next we have to remember the e-steps that were written on the back of the extruder. I had 887 and 938 and we need to put those into the firmware so that can be done through the control panel by going to Configuration, Advanced Settings, scrolling all the way down till we get to E Steps and E1 Steps. So E Steps is the value for the first extruder, which I've got 887 here, so I need to modify that. And for E1, I need to set that to 938. All right, I'm also going to press store memory, although I don't know if I actually need to or not. As I said, all of this is detailed in the guide here, including that step, and in fact it does say to select store memory once you've adjusted the E-steps. The next thing is to get two sample squares for calibration, and in the guide there's two downloads here for two STLs, and it says to load them into Cura in the following order, inner square, then outer square. So I've already got those here, so let's put those into Cura. There's the inner square and there's the outer square. Now I've got some STLs in my Cura bed space here, I've got the little control icons appeared, so if I click onto that, it should bring up the control interface, and you'll notice the printer reboots when you connect to it, and then the display comes back. And now I can home the printers to test the height of those nozzles. Before homing the printer, I'm going to wind my Z lead screw end stop right up, which uh, hits a switch on the um, carriage to say that's the end, just to make sure that doesn't crash into the bed, and we'll also be very careful, should be more than high enough. So now if I hit the home button in Cura on the control panel, which is the greenhouse on the bottom left of the control there, 
That should cause the printer to start homing. Now just be careful when it gets to the bottom that it doesn't crash into the bed, which I don't think it will, but if it does I'll hit the power switch. So as you can see, um, we're absolutely nowhere near the bed. I can get my finger under there. So now I can bring the Z lead screw down and keep homing it till I get to the right height. I've just brought that little end stop down a bit and I'm just gonna home Z again by clicking on Z. Still nowhere near. Let's go down a little bit more and so on and so on. Now I need to try and get both nozzles level so they're the same height. And we've got this little adjuster at the front and we can use an allen key to turn that to raise the front one up or down or whatever we want to do and we need to get uh, get it so basically a piece of paper will fit under here um, and then we can get the height of both of them correct Right, so I've gone as low as I can, but it's still not quite low enough. Um, so the guide recommends actually taking the spring and the washer out, so we should be able to unscrew this completely. Here we go, and we'll just drop out the washer and the spring. Put that back in, and then I should be able to get down low enough. So I've got those basically to be the right height by adjusting the front screw and adjusting the Z height there. And now the recommendation is a piece of paper folded in half, so this is just copy of paper, should be tight but not completely tight under there. And that seems to be the same on both of them. So I'm pretty happy with that. I feel a bit uncomfortable having taken that spring out, so I'm actually gonna cut it in half and put it back in so that my end stop there doesn't wobble and go out of alignment while it's printing. Here it is, so I'm just gonna snip that with wire cutters somewhere in the middle and put this little piece back in. It's quite hard to see, but the spring is in there, the little bit of spring, so this doesn't come loose and I've leveled up my hot ends so that the paper fits underneath and it's kind of tight but I can still move it and that's exactly the same on the front and rear hot ends. I can now power up my hot ends and put some filament in there. So you'll notice on the screen here we've only got one place to enter temperature but we can switch between hot ends by typing g-code commands in. So to select the first hot end I put T0 and it says active extruder 0 and then I can set the temperature there. I'm going to set that one to 240 for ABS. Then I'm going to type in T1 and then I'm going to set that one, it says 220 in the guide for NinjaFlex but I feel more comfortable with 230 from experience so that's what I'm going to do. There we go, I'm also going to set the bed to 100 degrees. You'll see on the display we've got in the top here are the target temperatures. We can also set those through the control panel so if you press the button and go to temperature go down to custom temperature you can set each one independently or in fact there are presets there for ABS and NinjaFlex, HIPS NinjaFlex and various other combinations of materials for now we set them so we can just wait for that to heat up so now my temperatures are up I need to remove these bits of filament that came in here and feed in the good filaments the good filament samples that were supplied so I can just wind this out There we go, and I've already fed the uh, new one down the guide tube. So let's uh, feed that in. You can just see that coming out of the bottom of the hot end. There we go, so that's enough, and we need to do that for the back extruder as well. So that's the white sample of ABS purged out, and you can see the black is coming through there that was supplied. So generally the PEI bed on these printers is really good at sticking PLA, ABS and lots of other plastics to and they stick really well when it's hot and come off really well when it's cold. 
The exception, of course, is Ninja Flex, which sticks really well when it's hot and when it's cold. Um, exceptionally well when it's hot. In fact, it welds itself on and you can't get it off. And that's what the glue stick is for. So if you're printing ABS only, you wouldn't need to do this. You don't need any covering or any coating on the PEI. Um, but as it is, I need to put glue on so that my Ninja Flex doesn't weld itself on. So we're just going to put a thin coat of, of uh, this glue somewhere in the middle before we do any printing. I've actually cooled the bed down as well, I should note. It's not 100 degrees. It's slightly warm. It's on the way down and I'll heat it up again in a minute. But uh, that should be more than enough for where we want to print. And that helps me get the Ninja Flex off. So the next thing here is to merge our prints into a dual extruder print. So if we click on the smallest square here, right click and select dual extrusion merge, we should find they sit like this inside each other. On the menu on the top left here, we've got the uh, material menu and that should be set to ABS and Ninja Flex and standard print profile. If we now say switch to full settings, It'll ask us if we want to take those quick print settings through into the full settings options. And if we say yes to that, uh, we get a few things here. We get the um, mainly the setup for the layer height, the, th the bottom top thickness, fill density, and a number of other things that we can actually change. Uh, we do need to go and make one change, though, which is on the basic menu here under dual extrusion. So we need to, for now, untick Wipe and Prime Tower and untick Ooze Shield. And now we can open the control panel and print those parts. My printer is up to temperature again, so now I'm going to click on Print in Cura. And off it should go. And this is a calibration print, so we can align those extruders properly. So the test print is finished and my bed is now cooled and we can see what we left it with here are the two squares printed in two materials. We can also see quite a lot of ooze here that oozed out of the NinjaFlex nozzle um, and that's kind of expected because NinjaFlex is quite um, stretchy so it compresses when it's extruding and if you just let that nozzle go free then some uncompresses and oozes out. There is a feature to take care of that we'll use in the final print uh, which is the wipe and prime tower and the ooze shield which we unticked but for now we don't want them so we can test the calibration. So you'll see in fact that my uh, middle square is much further over this side. This gap is much smaller than it is this side. And um, that's probably because the extruder nozzles aren't um, aligned properly. And this whole process is to test that so we can align them. And that's probably just because the screw holes and the tolerance and everything and when the hot ends are fitted they're not quite perfectly in line. So what we need to do is measure the distance of the top and bottom and the left and right. So we measure this gap. We can either do that using the Lolspot supplied ruler, which is supplied with every printer. In fact, I'm going to use some digital calipers to get an accurate idea of what that is. I'm going to write those values down and then we'll see what to do with them. 
So I've written down those values and in the guide, step 34, there is a link to an online calculator which takes you to this page. So uh, basically it tells you what to put in here in terms of the values. So the old X is a zero, old Y is minus 50, which is the distance front to back between the extruders. And then I've put in the new values that I've measured here. And that's calculated values to put back into Cura of minus one point. 245 and minus 49.590 so if I go back to Cura now and go to machine settings you'll find down the bottom here there's a place to update those values so then we update those values and then do the print again and that should then give us a print that's in line so here's test print version 2 which is much more central you can see that the gaps are pretty much the same and I've just measured those out with the calipers again and they are pretty accurate each side. So now we're ready for a proper dual extruder print. We're going to print the example Lolzbot dual extruder print keyring. So if we look at step 38 of the guide, we've got two STLs, which I've already downloaded, and I've brought those into Cura. And we want the main body here to be flexible, so we're going to left click on the Lolzbot text, right click on the body and select dual extrusion merge and the red part here will be printed on the front flexible extruder and the yellow part will be printed on the rear one in rigid material so what we need to do um, is enable the wipe and prime tower and the ooze shield but we can actually just enable those by default by selecting expert and selecting quick print and just selecting standard print and checking the material is ABS and NinjaFlex. The printer's finished, so what's left on the print bed? Well, there's some ooze, and this time we had the wipe and purge tower and the um, ooze shield turned on. So the black piece around this print is the ooze shield, and you'll notice it's caught quite a lot of ooze. Similarly, this black thing in the middle is part of the ooze shield, and this is the wipe and purge tower. So each time it's swapped extruder, it's purged out the ooze. So obviously when it oozes, some of the filament oozes out of the nozzle, then there'll be no pressure to print the first bit. So it goes and purges it on here before printing. So hopefully that leaves us with a nice clean print in the middle, but we need to get rid of the um, ooze shield first. So that should come away quite easily. Yes, there we are. And the middle of that as well, as I say, but let's get this off the bed. Hopefully it will leave that behind. Well, it hasn't quite left it behind, so I need to pop that out. All right, I'll have to work on that and we'll have another shot of it. Here it is, so I got that piece out of the middle. It was sort of stuck in with some ooze and you can see it's a bit dirty there, but the rest of this is absolutely fine. So the edges you can see are extremely clean and that's an extremely good quality print. And obviously having that ooze shield has stopped um, the colors bleeding into each other as they would have done otherwise. So you can see those, uh, those edges are really sharp. There's hardly any or none really of crossover between the two. So on the previous extruder, slicing with slicer, I had some issues with the colours bleeding, but um, I think this is really good. So obviously it's flexible, and you can see these um, two filaments are bonded together really well. I don't think there's any gaps at all, so it's done an extremely good job of it. So there we go. I'm going to have loads of uses for this dual extruder printing in two materials to make hybrid prints. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see some of those examples in the future. And if you want to look at some of the previous ones, then check out my alien xenomorph suit. Alright, that's all for now.